Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Good afternoon. Today is the 11th of November and uh, this is the 2022 NEC Classic Motor Show sponsored by Lancaster Insurance at the NEC in Birmingham. This is part three of the slightly shambolic shuffle and uh, we will be doing about 18 to 20 parts in total. Um, we aren't like a lot of other channels who select <laughs> what they want to film, we just try to film everything. With the possible exception of the fact if it's something that's just seems a little bit too new to be here or if something is powered by a forbidden fuel engine then we do not discuss it. So uh, we're just about to finish off Hall 2, parts 1 and 2 have been Hall 2. Um, and we've arrived at the National Microcar Rally Stand. This is a Noble, um, Noble 200 from 1959. It's actually a licensed built copy of the German Fulda Mobile. Uh, the Fulda Mobile is um, from the area of, of Germany uh, where the River Fulda is, funnily enough. One motoring writer described, described the Fulda Mobile as a lesser shaped egg create, a lesser egg shaped creation. I don't know if it really is, but this is what it looks like. It is egg shaped with only three wheels. This is something I've never seen before. A Lama Monocar, the narrowest car ever built, uh, made between 1946 and 1951. Um, I mean, God. <laughs> oh my God. It's amazing to see something like this. I, I don't think I'll ever, I'll, I'm ever going to ever, ever see another one of these. Um, <laughs> uh, let's not think about trying to get in there viewers let's go and have a look at this instead it's just the uh, yeah it's a thing made by Vespa I can't remember what the aim of this was um, yeah Vespa 400 from 1959 it's actually a four-seater I don't think I want to sit in the back of that viewers I'm not sure there's really much room for people at all in here but it's very charming and everything um, but yes Vespa well, they didn't really make many cars, did they? That was, I think, the only one I think I'm aware of that they made. It's quite exciting, this stand, actually. It's just something I, I don't really know much about, but there seems to be an awful lot of variety. Obviously, before the Mini, then these were quite popular, particularly during the Suez crisis in 56, 57. Sort of similar to, to now, we've got this sort of high oil prices and things. So, Messerschmitt KR200, classic micro car. Uh, this one... I don't know what year it is, it doesn't actually say, but they were made over here as well. Um, I don't know if this is a German or a British manufactured one. But yes, they made quite a few of these actually. Um, again, I, I'm a little bit terrified for someone like me, but there we go. Oh, it's a Bond mini car, Mark B. I think they made a lot of marks. This is a Mark B. I think the whole, the whole engine moves with the steering, as it does. Uh, yeah, um, again, probably not something I'd want to get in because I, I'd, I'd be afraid I might die if I crashed, uh, but never mind. Ooh, Barclay? Yes, I remember these. Um, this one, I don't know exactly what year this is. They're only made between 1956 and 1960. There aren't many of these around. And then, of course, there's a Peel P50, probably the most famous of all. British made micro cars. This one's for sale. Is this an original one or is this a, um, a replica one that they made later on? I think in 2010 or something? There we go, 2011. Um, gas, Eco, and Fun are the newer models. Um, I don't know. Absolutely no idea, viewers. I have absolutely no idea if that's a old, new or old one. It could be could be an old one. I don't know. Answers in the comment section below. An Aston Martin DB4. That looks very nice, viewers. Very nice. What is this? Is it a Lincoln? Something like, no, it's not. I can tell by the side lamps, but it's not. Oh, it's a nice one to imbue at Regal. Okay. 
in some amazing sort of custom paint job. Automotive Alchemist. Is that a cord? It certainly looks like a cord. Yeah, it's a cord. I'm just not getting everybody's way there. Tetanus. Right hand drive cord 812. Wow, so it'd be about 1938 and like that. Just trying to trip over anything here. It's, got, it's only Friday and it's already really, really busy here. Um, it's going to be a, even busier tomorrow and on Sunday. Um, Deja. It's based on a Riley RM donor vehicle. And it... It's got bits including a mini Jaguar Mark V, a Ford Street car. Oh my gosh, it's a completely bespoke car. What <laughs> have the Ford Street car bits in here? I don't know. Um, yeah, let's uh, move on to something that I might know a bit more about. Ah, uh, yes, this will be much more I know a bit more about. A Jaguar XJS. V12 convertible from 1988. Yes, please, viewers. This one seems quite reasonable, 20, 24995. That's not quite a beige leather interior, viewers. It's more like an olive colour, I think. We're not far off. We do like a nice beige leather interior on this channel. I would prefer, probably, um, myself to have the six cylinder one. It's a little bit better on fuel. Um, but yeah, local plate to Parkstone, which is in uh, to the Bournemouth Pool area, um, RU, and that's the old pre 1995 phone area code as well. What about this uh, XKR? Ooh, that's very nice. 2004 XKR Coupe. Hmm. It's almost a beige leather interior again, viewers. That's uh, it's maybe a cream one. Yes, we like that very much. It's got wood as well, of course. Yeah, 16995, a bit more affordable then. Uh, Beecham Nut and Bolt Restoration. What is this? Is this a Jackie and Mark II or something? Be a 3.8, I imagine. Yeah, 3.8. Uh, 1961. Yeah, they've got up a lot in value, haven't they, these Mark IIs? Ones like this, £42,500. So, uh, I think it's a Series 2 E-Type. Beige. <laughs> yes, <laughs> beige and beige leather interior. Yes, please, viewers. Uh, so, this is um, left-hand drive one. It's about 79,995. Okay, so, what year is this? A 69. It'd be a Port of America, I imagine. Interesting. So, <laughs> it's got a 1970 plate on it, but it's a 69. I suppose these things can happen, aren't they? Mm, well, the interior is still quite nice views. Uh, we do like that. We also do like the Volvo Enthusiast Club. Which is Torslander. It's right at the end of 240 production. They, they, they brought these out. And I remember these when they were new. This is a 92. I think they made them into 1993. Um, so it's got a Reblock engine. It's a 2 litre with a cat, I just think, by this stage. Um, that is, that's very nice. I don't think they came with electric windows, I think they were manual windows, but you can't really see. The interior is very dark. It, it, the lighting in here doesn't really help that, but this is immaculate, isn't it? Look at this. Um, the worst place 240's rust is the bottom of the tailgate, but this one's perfect. My mother's one, which had her 240, actually started to rust, but this one's all right. That's pretty good, viewers. Um, let's have a look and see if we can see yet more 1800s and P1800s. Um, there we go, there is uh, Roger himself. I love old ITC series viewers and um, I, I've attended so many events um, from uh, you know fans of these cars. Now this car's not a screen-used one, that was the, the plate that one of the screen-used ones had. There were two screen... Uh, one was... Roger Moore's personal car I used to get to film and then was the screen used one. These are the later ones from 67 which were used in the series until the end of filming in the summer of 1968. Um, there's actually an earlier P1800 
P1800 over there. This isn't an 1800, it's an 1800S by this stage. Um, but yeah, we've had wheels like this. This is very, very nice. Today. The colour actually is more kind of cream rather than white as it looks on camera. So, thank you. You're welcome. It just looks. Everybody talks about. It just looks cream in real life, but it, on, on my camera, as you can see here, it looks white. Yep. 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 But yeah, I've, I've. It's very, very nice. Thank you very much. I feel like Sir Roger in here. I think that one of the originals I've seen on J Lone's garage actually had like a fan in the back because he didn't have air conditioning, and when he was on the way to Elstree Studios in sort of hot mornings, he had a little fan. Um, but this is like as close as you could get to one of the, one of the screen news ones. It's very, very nice. As you see, representing. Um, so, there, so there were two of them. There was um, NUV 647 and NUV 6480. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, so the, um, the 648 was the one he used to actually to get to the studio in his own personal car, and the, the 7 was the one that was actually used on screen. They also cut up interiors of the previous ones to actually representative was driving around. So we've got an earlier one here as well. This will be um, it's a 65. Again, that's that was the plate of the early screen news one. But this one um, obviously is not not the, not the same. Um, even though it has an ST1 plate on it. This will be um, another 1800S. Because after 1963, uh, Jensen just weren't they weren't actually um, building the cars to the right quality um, or in the numbers that they actually wanted so um, they uh, they had to sort of take production back in house and specifically will be made in Sweden so red interior like the earlier screen use ones were um, very different wheels of disc wheels and here we've got a, a, a much a much early one this actually is <laughs> One of the one of the proper ones from the from the series. I've seen this at various um, events over the years. There we go, 71 DXC. There were uh, two. 77 GYL was the, the second one. This is the first one. This is um, just amazing seeing this screen. I don't know. I don't know how much this is worth. It's probably totally priceless. This car. So there we go. With red interior, which is different. Um, have a cow horn bump as you saw at the front but rear is slightly different Annoying, but, not. but yeah this is this is the original car from the series the first episode filmed as it says on there was Tandy Tarbs in the June 1962 and then um, that episode came out in October 62 so we've got three representations of the cars that they that they used over over the years in the Saint series all um, you can call them I think you can either call it four series or six series. It depends how you want to separate the filming blocks. But yeah, for somebody like me who is very, very much into the old ITC series, this is an absolute delight. And um, Sir Roger is uh, was a wonderful, wonderful man. It's interesting to you. So I'm not very familiar with trucks or anything, but this is a Volvo F88. I think this will be 75, 76. Yeah, 75. There we go. Uh, there's one for you who into the trucks. Um, I don't know anything about them, but there we go. Ooh, more of these sort of micro cars. There's, um, there's quite a few here, actually. This, I think, what stand of this? Is this the uh, yeah, Zetas? So, um, got Zetas here. This is behind the Trojans. The Trojans were built in Brighton, near Brighton Railway Station. Um, they were a licensed copy of the uh, behind call bubble cars. Look at that shape. Isn't that amazing? So I think they were they were only built for a few years. My memory isn't very good at this sort of stuff, but I think it was sort of like 62 to 65 of the Trojans. Um, and there is a Heinkel. This is a original German one, left-hand drive, in this kind of crazy purple that became popular in the 60s. Also got some friends in the back as well there, a little cushion. Another Trojan. Most of the Trojans I've seen have got pre-63 uh, pre, um, plates on them, although until 1965 it wasn't actually a given at all that uh, you would have a suffix on your registration. So in 63, 64 and 65 you would just have 
the normal pre-suffix plates, like, well, for example, this one here. Um, it's only later on that all, all local authorities, I think from about 65, started using the suffix letters. You see the, uh, the Azetas again. There were locally made ones of these as well. Yes, the Zetas do have a reverse gear, excellent. Set to 300. There were four wheeler ones made elsewhere, but I think the majority of them made in this country were three wheelers. Amazing sort of feat of engineering to sort of fit all the steering gear and everything into so this. This is a Zeta Plus. Obviously, the original company that made them was actually a. Um, uh, French manufacturer ESO and later on they made other cars the ESO Grifo and things like that excellent let's have a look at some uh, bond bugs most of the bond bugs I see are 700 ESs these were made I think on the Reliant Regal platform from what I remember and used uh, Reliant engines and gearboxes although uh, Reliant had owned the Bond company for some time and they thought maybe by putting the Bond name on on this car as opposed to the Reliant name they had less of a risk in terms of if it all went totally wrong um, they could uh, you know just say oh it's not our car but you know most people do know by these days that uh, they were the same company at that stage yeah, I've never, I don't think I've sort of seen one it's not 100 ES I mean this one so says 750 ES, I imagine it's got a, a, a larger engine in it. And then someone's taken it to the extreme because all of them said, you know, open on there. So he said, put the minimum amount of oxygen fuel in it and put the tyre at 24 PSI. So that's pretty handy, actually. Yeah. I think I'm a bit terrified to have a go in one of these years. I think that's what it is. Um, so we won't talk about it and we'll move on to ooh, a light rebel four wheels isn't that amazing so this is four wheel version of a reliant regal i think there's still glass fiber yeah you can see you still it's still glass fiber in the actual construction of the car this is quite a late one on an m so 73 74 I think this is a uh, this would be a Rialto here. Yeah, don't disturb genius at work. I remember these were relatively common back in the days when I was growing up, but obviously you just don't see them anymore, do you? Reliant went under, I think, around 2001, 2002. There we go, it's a Jubilee Rialto, uh, C plate, AT586. I remember the steering wheel being used in all kinds of other things as well. we got here we got a, yes we've got a really late one here with the uh, Corsa B front lines so that'll be on a T so I think that's 99 only actually so they kept making them for a long long time and you can see it's just a very heavily facelifted version of, of the original design of the Robin which came out I'd like to say about 1974 hello to leading underscore design on Instagram so we've got, even got the different rear lights on these as well. So we've got a Robin van. Yes, it's quite an early one, so nice long contrast here. Um, on an end, so this one will be sort of 74, 75, I think. So Fiat 500 Club. I imagine this is the confusing name from other 500s. Which, uh, well, not the first 500, because those were Topolinos. But this particular design that came out of 57. This is, uh, I think, before uh, 1965. It's got the suicide doors on it, so this will be sort of an earlier early one. As you can say, it says no other 500 on it. Or no other Cinquecento, it should be. This later one here has the conventional opening door. It still says no other Cinquecento on it. I think it's about 65 they changed to the conventional opening doors and oh, is that Eeyore or is that Donkey from Shrek? By the way he looks uh, very comfortable. Oh it is Eeyore. 
don't look so sad. Um, there we go. So yeah, 66. Um, and then this is Ferrison 67, so it is on an E. It's very nice condition, isn't it? And then we've got, this, I think these are called the Jollies. These are the sort of ones that you would see down at the beach. As you can see, it's ideal for, you know, putting sand and whatever in there. <laughs> just don't touch it. Yes, indeed, I won't touch it. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's 69 feet at 500 jolly. Another one of these uh, jollies was also used on the Pristina O, the yacht was owned by Aristotle and Nassus, and the former Mrs. Kennedy, who lived with Cambridge Lady Wife. Ooh, Vignale Gamine. Yes, these were based on a Theatre 500, but they had unique bodywork. Uh, it says a 66, but registration is from 1968 to 9, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, maybe this was uh, just not registered until later. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a really cr crazy thing. And <laughs> they were called the Noddy Car when they were marketed over here. That's genuinely what they were called. So what's this one then? So it's a 68 Fiat 110F. Never heard of one of those. Um, there we go, it's been in the family for whatever. Yeah, 500 cc engine with four speed crash box. Not the easiest thing to drive then. Oh, it's a very early Giardin era. I think later Giardin eras were um, with the Outer Bianchi mark. This is uh, an earlier one, front engine doors, and the engine, engine in the back. Yeah, 63 actually on on an A. Right, viewers, let's go to a different hall now. Goodness me, Mr. Richardson from Furious Driving actually made it in his uh, unrestored Rover 420 Tourer. I think we're supposed to be filming this car um, on the channel next week, viewers, so I do hope that you. Uh, you enjoy that. Um, he's obviously in mid-conversation here, so we won't interrupt him or let him get on with things. And uh, despite much tribulation earlier this week, it looks like Mr. Rian Seabrook from the Hub Nut Channel has also made it in the 2CV. So, uh, there we go. That is, uh, excellent. That is interesting. Right. I think what we're going to do is actually we will go now down to hall number eight and uh, we will get round there um, just get that one knocked out because it's quite away from everywhere else so that's what we'll do and uh, I'll just come back in a moment well viewers I'm certainly not disappointed when I eventually got all the way down to hall eight look at this it's the Cortina Mark II Owners Club. This is a uh, two-door 600E. I've never seen a two-door 600E before. It doesn't actually say the exact year that this was made, but it's on a, I think it's on a G. Yeah, it's on a G, so 68-69. It's a left-hand drive one as well, that's fascinating. Maybe they never made the 600 e for our market left in a two-door version. It's probably why I've never never seen one before. Oh, right, okay, so it's uh, from Sweden. That makes sense. This is a Crayford as well. Different front end, of course, from the 600 e What was this based on? Oh, yeah, it's based on 600, no, probably 600 GT. And uh, this one... Yeah, it doesn't say the exact year, but it's also on a G, so 68, 69. Crayford had a very long relationship with Fords, 
uh, building the convertible versions of their cars, and this is no exception. Look at that stereo. Three separate bits in it. Crazy. Yeah, we've got loads more forwards in here, so this is going to be uh, multiple parts of just, just this all here, which is the smallest one of all. What we've got here it's a modified two door GT from 1967. Yeah, that engine, oh, it's not standard at all. That's out of the Focus ST, isn't it? That, that's very fast. It's getting, it's getting busy in here. I think down here, though, we have some more Cortina. This is a Mark 5 and uh, Mark 4. I just love watching say Mark 4 and Mark 5. This is a Mark 5 Cortina. The rear body looks very similar to a Mark 4. It's a 1.6 L estate, 1981 to 82. This is the kind of thing that I'm sure a lot of you um, would have seen when you were growing up, just everywhere. But Sadly, due to rust and low second-hand values and general kind of disinterest for years, uh, there aren't many Cortina around at all anymore. I think the only ones in here are Mark 5s, despite this is being the Mark 4 and 5 owners club, but that's not a problem. It's a very late one, isn't it, on a Y? It'd be one of the last, it'd be an 82 only then. Yeah, still got the four-speed gearbox in it. 1.6. LS. Typical kind of colour of the time, isn't it? This, this sort of beige colour. Also typical is this uh, it's rather nice blue metallic. Gosh, it's just rep circa 1980 spec, isn't it? This. In fact, the Mark V Cortina was called the Cortina 80. That was where it was marketed. It wasn't actually, it wasn't actually marketed as a Mark V. It was marketed as the Cortina 80. Very, very nice. Do we get a rev count? No, we don't. It's not uh, not high up the tree enough. If this was a 2.3 gear view, then we'd be having we'd be having a rev counter in there, but uh, not this time. It's still very nice, though, isn't it? It's very nice. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? All right, thank you. Is this an 81 or eight? This is, is uh, June 80. So it's an 80. Yeah. What a GL, you still don't, still don't get a rev counter though, because it's not a gear. No, no, it's pretty basic. It's a mid-range car. It's very nice though, isn't it? Thank, yes, thank you. Excellent. Yes. Do you mind if I open the door? Not at all, I'll open it up. Sit a bit. Yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a look, look, look inside view as a little treat, because um, we don't often get to do this at the show, there's just so many things to do. Look at this, you've actually still got kind of fake wood on the dash. I can see sort of bits in here that are similar to a Mark III Capri and other bits that are kind of similar to a Mark II Granada. In fact, I will have a sit down because I have not sat down so far today. So I will have a sit down. Oh, it's very nice. It's so funny. You can clearly tell in this car that you were too cheap to have a rev counter. So they just gave you an enormous space where the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge are. You need to buy the gear if you want rev counters and such things. But I think even on the gears, the windows were still windy windows. It smells nice in here too. Is this a padded dash? Yeah, not quite. If I ask him very nicely, do you think he'll let me have a go in this at some point? Yes, if I ask him very nicely. Right, I think we're going to have to move on, I'm afraid. We've got more shambolic shuffling to do. I think before we go to part four views, we'll just have a look at one more, one more stand in here. Uh, it's a Ford Classic and Retro Sports cars. So, 1988 Ford Fiesta Mark II XR2. I have driven a Mark II on the channel. It was a 1.1 automatic, um, just an L spec. Um, an XR2 would be nice though. Um, it's a bit posher than the VL, although on VL you still do actually get the. Um, if I can just sneak on here and have a look at the interior. I, don't know, I was looking at the. There we go, yeah, you get the high spec dash in this um, with a rev count of a lower spec. Mark II Fiestas had a different dash where you couldn't actually even fit a rev counter into them. The, the heater controls were on the side of the dash rather than there, which are very in the middle. But yeah, classic sort of uh, this time. Maybe I can actually take a look at this Cortina while I'm here as well. 
a two door Cortina, a very late Mark II. Oh, it's a, oh, is this a, a low, wow, it's a Lotus one. Yeah, it's a very late one, but it was 1970 only then. <laughs> it's amazing. And then uh, a Mark II Mondeo. Excellent. This is the ST200 model. Mmm, with the uh, Duratec V6. Excellent. Well, I think that's uh, someone we can leave it now, viewers. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching part three of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 uh, classic motor show here at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below, and we'll see you soon in part number four.